Good morning. You're listening to Drinking Socially, the official untapped podcast. Your weekly look into what's happening in the untapped community and the world of beer. Support for Drinking Socially is brought to you by Manscaped. Who is the best in men's below the waist grooming? Manscaped. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technological developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. And we have an exclusive offer for our listeners, 20% off and free shipping. All you have to do is use the code drinking socially, one word, Bring it socially at manscaped.com. That's it. Well, that should be easy to remember. And also leaves me kind of wishful thinking for, mm. well, here's a question, uh, a rhetorical. What's the first thing you ever wished for? Probably a sweet guitar or a bow and arrow for your 12th birthday as you blew spit all over your candles. <laughs> the, the old days are definitely long gone, but wishes are certainly here to stay. They're, in my opinion, they're part of the human spirit. They're part of what drives us to get out of bed at 10 a.m. And for beer, it's been <laughs> part of Untap since I can remember, wish list. So, when you're following Harrison on Twitter or Untapped, you see that he's drinking a really awesome beer on Tuesday mid afternoon, and you think, "Damn, that sounds amazing!" But I don't have that beer. This is where Untapped's wish list comes in. It's like a personal beer butler or a concierge. Either way, Untapped has been helping us keep track of our beer wishes since you first put that first beer on your wish list. And today we're going to talk about a little. Easter egg badge you can earn from making your wishes come true, or at least just for drinking them. Uh, Harrison, tell them how they can win. Yes, today we're all lucky because we're going to talk about the Your Wish Came True badge. So this badge is awesome. I recently earned it, spoiler alert. Um, we'll talk about that more in a moment, but it was pretty cool how it happened. Kind of a surprise out of nowhere. We'll get to that in a bit, but if you're wondering at home or unaware of this badge or didn't know that your wish just did more than just track your beers, um, let me tell you a little more about it. So in order to get the Your Wish Came True badge, all you have to do is check in 10 beers from your wish list in a 60-day period, and only one check-in from your wish list per day counts what? to this badge. So there's right, so maybe it's not as simple it's as I It's easier to become the mayor of but, London. <laughs> are they still doing mayor? Not important. Um, right. London, Ohio. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're right, John. So there's there's one of, this is another one of those badges as we dig deeper and deeper into the badge, the badge land that is untapped. It's got some interesting parameters tied to it. There's the time limit and then a day limit on top of the time limit. 10 is a nice number, so I'm, I'm cool with 10 beers being the thing. But again, this badge has a lot of goofy things about it. We have some cool stats about it, though, that we're going to share in a moment. But first, as always, got to wet our whistles. John, what are we, are we enjoying a beverage this evening? So What's the that? beer we're drinking tonight is from Oxbow Brewery, someone I'm really excited to see out here in Wilmington, North Carolina. And it's called Dusky. Which, I mean, come on, it's like a baseball player's name. Beautiful. Right, um, right. beautiful. I, I'm, I feel like I should go put it on my wish list really quick before I drink it to help earn this badge. <laughs> if, if it's cheating, then I'm, I, I don't know. Is, is it winning if it's cheating? Anyways, Expo <laughs> Brewing Dusky. This is a Harrison beer. What year is it, Harrison? What year is it now? You, 20. <laughs> <laughs> Is it 2021, Whoops. I think? It is uh, 2021. It's the year of the lager. Oh, that. Got year. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, and, and also, mechanically, 2021. <laughs> um, it's a dark yeah. lager from Oxbow Brewing. Harrison's pouring it into his cup, and I'm just hurrying through this so I can get, oh, that's beautiful. Um, 4%. Yeah. Two it. years ago, John, I would have laughed at a 4% beer. 
Today, John, love it. I can drink this a 16 ounce can. I'm going to crush it before this episode's over. It rates 3.87 on untapped. And a little bit of info about this Dusky is, as we said, a dark lager. It's brewed with 100% malted Ooh. barley and some main grown hops, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to shut up and pour this into a glass. And Harrison's mm. going to tell us, how does this thing taste, man? This is wild. So if you remember the Schwartz Buckler episode we did not too long ago, we had Nightfall and Lager Mountain from Flying Machine. And that was a more Schwartz beer style um, lager and a little bit more ABV. This one's very similar, but it is, um, I mean, it's 4%. It's not almost 6 I think that was easily over 5 So um, there's a little less body. But it's cool. It's like a light locker that's got like a little kind of smoky roasting note that happens right at the end. Um, so a ton of flavor. And it should be, um, especially for the ABV, like that there's specially malts at all. Like that it looks like this and there's many specially malts as there are in here, but it's not 6% is, is pretty impressive. So I'm thinking of it. It's very light. It's very clean. And it's really just like a quick little like smoky, chocolatey roast note. And then it's poof gone just like just like a fairy godmother poofing away <laughs> as they so often do that's why they're hard to catch fairy godmothers and leprechauns right. often hanging that's out it. in the same that's circles double-sided tape that's the trick <laughs> <laughs> so what do you got over things. there yeah For so this many is things. good yeah this is good it's uh, thank you for reminding me that it was nightfall on Lager Mountain we drank for the Schwarzbuckler episode. At a glance, this is another dark lager, a little bit lower in ABV. I expect it to taste really similar, and it does, right? Like, it should taste mm -hmm. similar. Yeah. They're in the same – they're cousins. Um, but what I like about this is I recall that nightfall on Lager Mountain – this is cleaner. It's a little bit lighter. It's a little bit cleaner. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, when I drank Nightfall, I said immediately, like, this makes me think of, like, drinking at a campfire, like, to finish my night yeah. outside, smoky, right. warm, roasty. This is a little bit more, like, I think this is, I could drink this in the afternoon. Like, this yeah. would complement whatever you're eating for lunch. And it won't weigh you down if you're getting up in the ages like some of me and my me. But um, this is, this is, <laughs> in the John's book mm. of things, this is a lunch beer, true and true. Yeah. It's opening up nicely, as I always do, in my ice cold fridge. But it's, uh, yeah, and, and this is kind of, I think it's worth noting that this is like the, whatever, the sister beer of their northern lager, which is a 4%. Uh, like American light lager also brewed with a hundred percent barley and main hops. Yeah. This one. Yeah. So it's, it's very similar to this beer. Yeah. Great logo. Great, great. I mean, they do everything so well, but, um, but that was kind of the reason I wanted to grab this is whenever you're talking about lagers, especially ones in the lower ABVs, one of my first questions is always like, is this, 100% barley or is this got a bunch of corn or rice or other kind of adjuncts in it? Cause that's common practice and, and not always bad, but common practice to kind of use things that aren't malted barley to just kind of get, um, just kind of bring the ABV down in that beer and not let it like, rather get up. Um, so th that was cool. This is 4% full stop, but it is just malted barley in there. And I really wanted to see like, how could they make a, a full flavored dark lager that's just four percent, and they've done it. Um, so this is cool. Like it's you're right. It's like the fact that it's four percent is so exciting because you're, you're it's fit for a liter or two or three, and <laughs> you're still able to finish the lawn or the nap or whatever you're you know, got planned for the day. What, I always pretend that I have responsibilities as I'm drinking my beer, right? Like, oh, I can <laughs> mow the lawn. Yeah, right. If I'm drinking, if I'm drinking this beer, I'm not mowing the lawn. I could yeah. as a challenge, but I'd much right. rather be like watching whatever's left exactly. of March Madness or yep, yep, yeah, or the whatever movie that you're you're already watching. Right, this beer allows me to have another beer. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Those are my favorite kind of beers. Um, um, did you see yeah. 
uh, I don't want to derail this with a tangent, but I'm going to. So Good. I apologize ahead of time. There was a really cool <laughs> post in the Facebook group uh, uh, about a week ago where they said, uh, rename your favorite movie and, and use yes. the word beer in yes. it. I'm not, I'm not saying that right. But man, I was having so much fun reading through those. I know. Um, which I can't think of any of them right now. Uh, 28 beers later. That was my favorite. Ooh, easily. that's a good one. That's right. We're all zombies have to at that point. The premise of the movie, right? It's yeah. the same thing. Perhaps the original title was a typo. Um, yeah, I saw Good Beer Hunting, which is always one that comes up a lot. And you brought back the hilarious memory that we had a, a fun back and forth online with remaking the old Beast Master poster. You did this into Yeast Master and played up on that um so we've been down that road before but that was who 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 did we do that with someone online asked that question who was it? i don't remember uh in the facebook was group it? no the in the for the yeast master uh it that was it was good, good beer, beer hunting good beer hunting yeah um, cool the beer journalist group beer journalism beer journalism sites your journal uh, conglomerate. sure there, there you um, go. that's where i got that uh 100 ways to say cheers poster from, from yeah. that. that was a pretty cool operation yeah. Um, here's a, I don't want to, again, I'm going to derail this a little bit further, Perfect. but I want to ask, okay, so we had a lot of fun in the group about movies. I want to put you on the spot. Video games. Give me a video game and change one of the words to beer. And we'll just edit this out if, it, if it's too no. hard. I, don't know, I can't go first. Well, beer, well, beer hunter instead of, is it duck hunter? Duck hunter? I'm thinking yeah, Nintendo. Duck, beer duck hunter. Hunt. Duck hunt. duck hunt. So beer hunt. Thank you. Yes. Beer hunt. That'd be fun. You're shooting beers with the gun or something. The dog can still be there. How about yeah. instead of right, Mega Man, it could be Beer Man, or it could be Mega Beer. And that's a totally different game where you're forced to drink a gigantic beer. Um, let's keep going. Super Mario Brothers is too easy. Uh, what are some other ones that I've been playing? I recently downloaded like a uh, old uh, SNES sim- simulator for our Switch, and I've been ripping through their old arcade catalog and playing Meteoroid and all that stuff. Yes. This is a good question for me, but those are probably two that I I don't know right off the bat. Sure, I would like to see Mega Beer be a game. Um, it may, ex- I mean, in the it, it is a real game, but like in the safety of a of a video game. Um, do you have some John that, that that popped off the top of your mind? I can't think of a be- I can't think of a video <laughs> game name to save my life right now. There's probably twelve behind me. I like that all of yours came from 1985. <laughs> um, I would oh. like there's a there's a video game I play often when I ever I'm at a movie theater called Time Crisis. Yes, um, Beer Crisis is a situation Ooh. that I feel like I've lived through many times. So oh, yeah. That, make someone laugh or at least remember dropping 50 cents into the time crisis machine and then realizing it didn't work anymore and just going to watch your movie already. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Fearful of sticking your finger in the change return because I was told the old wives tale of like, right. People put needles in there. People put booby traps. You could get sucked into the boogie monsters realm. Never, never look for change. Just accept the loss and walk away. Um, never do it. No one's ever going to deal with this ever. There's no more. There are no more things you touch in the world. Everything is on your phone and, and digital. Um, so not a fear anymore. <laughs> Ooh, we'll revisit this later and do like cell phone like games. Um, I think we should. Now I'm thinking of how you don't you don't pay quarters to play games anymore. Ah, the world nope. has just gone ahead and gotten so fast. If I can steal the quote <laughs> from Shawshank, uh, <laughs> you may. Thank you. I love what it. else that do we cool. do, Harrison? How's that beer hitting you? Good night. Is that already halfway gone? Oh, yeah. Of course, right. John. I'm a, I'm a professional. Mm, it's only 4%. You're right. You're right. Mm. You're right. It is good. It's very – it's smooth, man, but it's got tons of flavor to it. That's always so impressive to me. I know I've said it a million times on this podcast, but like a low ABV beer that like tastes like a lot's happening, that's tough. To, it's just tough to do. Um and here we are tasting it up. Wow. And the more it, it's the more I'm I'm coming back to it, like I can identify almost like a, a subtle milk, like a LaCroix milk chocolate. But yes, what I'm right. more 
impressed with is that it it's I mean it's dark as heck, but it it if I close my eyes it oh, it could taste more like a Mars and Oktoberfest. Oh uh, yeah. Than a dark beer. If I wasn't looking at it and kind of absorbing that prejudice go. that it's going to pack like a coffee punch with it. Right, right, right. Yeah, I did not know what to expect. Well, I had an idea what to expect, but didn't know which way we would go. Dark, roasty, smoky, just kind of smooth, but maybe extra bitterness from the especially malts. And that's that's cool. That's um, That is pretty wild. And... Speaking of wild and crazy and fun, we got a badge to talk about, John, as we always do on this show. But first, we have some other cool things to talk about. Honestly, really cool. I'm excited to talk about um, our sponsor for this episode. And so without further ado, but maybe just a quick costume change if you're on YouTube. Uh, be right back. <laughs> Guys, Manscaped hooked us up. With a bunch of tools and formulations for their perfect package 3.0 kit. This is great. Manscaped has created the best ball hair trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents, which we know are horrible. And thanks to their advanced skin safe technology, I feel confident shaving my boys. In addition, this trimmer comes with an LED light for a more precise shave and is waterproof to make your shower shave clean and easy. You do not want to use the same trimmer you use on your face as your balls. That is just nasty. <laughs> the Lawnmower 3.0 <laughs> comes inside their brand new, it's a perfect package 3.0, which comes with everything you need to keep trim, don't cut yourself, and more importantly, smell nice down there. The Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0 also includes the Crop Preserver. It is an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put the order on your armpits. Why are you not putting the on the smelliest part of your body? And yes, your balls stink. <laughs> Speaking of sweaty, stinky balls, I'm thankful for their Crop Reviver. This product, along with the Crop Preserver, keeps your balls from sweating, smelling, sticking, stinking. It's great. Manscaped actually threw in two free gifts as well. We got in this perfect package. We got a, a, a pair of high performance boxer briefs, which I'm currently highly performing in. Um, they'll keep your junk feeling fresh all day, and a travel shed bag to store everything for the man on the go. You can look good while you're mobile as well. Keep your tools in the shed and trim that junk of yours. And it gets better. Get 20% off and free shipping. When you use the code drinking socially at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. All right. Well, speaking of things to be thankful for, let's make some wishes come true right now, John. Well, bad wishes. And talk Damn. more about this, right? This <laughs> not yeah, don't get your hopes too high. <laughs> Keep them around the middle to low bottom. Um <laughs> Uh, so the your wish came true badge again as a reminder in order to earn this badge you have to check in 10 beers from your wish list in a 60 day period only one check in from your wish list per day counts as badge so you can't max it out like in a day it's going to take you at least 10 days to do it um, but that's not too long and be organized and, and make it happen um, but so let's talk about uh our actually we talk about the overall stats first and what we how we're doing so only seventy four thousand people on untapped have unlocked this which compared to a lot of the other badges we've talked pretty low um which kind of speaks to the unique nature of it the elusive nature of it if you had, had if you've earned this badge and you look back at it you'll kind of see that um like there is no it doesn't track which beers are um, helping you unlock it. Like a lot of badges do, the, there's no levels to this badge. You only earn it one time and then it's gone. So it's kind of unique. But of the 74,000 people that uh, that have unlocked it, um, there's some pretty, I, I would say, not surprising names on this list of wish list beers. Um, Guinness is on there because Guinness is everywhere, as we've right. learned. He's but an untapped badge. Right. Guinness, is on. <laughs> Guinness is on it. Uh, that's what we're learning every single week. Um, but 
heady topper. So obviously that beer forever was like the beer, the New England IPA, the thing everyone I got to find a parking lot near a distributor and pay a guy 50 bucks to get him just to have him tell me when the truck was going to drop off the cases. <laughs> like it was wild. Uh, people flying in and private planes from other parts of the country to get it. Like that was, so that's not surprising. Eddie Topper is a phenomenon in and of itself and it's on here. So is Pliny the Elder. You know, beer that we've talked about, Zombie Dust, which for nice, you yeah. see it more, yeah, more now. But for a long time, that like Three Floyds didn't get much distribution, so I can see why that was um, could definitely be on a lot of people's wish lists, which is is great to see it here. And then some some classics here, and I would a Pale Ale, ninety minute from Dogfish Head, and Too Hearted from Bell's, which is one of my favorite beers. And I could see why if you can't get it every day, you want to pop it on your wish list so you don't miss out on it when you. When you can. So some great company there on this list. All of these beers are like beers that someone told me about at some point. Even mm-hmm. Guinness to to a lesser mm-hmm. extent, but like two hearted and ninety minute for sure. Before I had drank them, someone was telling me these are the greatest beers you'll ever have. And certainly yep. heady Pliny and Zombie Dust. Like if those beers weren't on your wish list at some point, you haven't been drinking very long. Yeah. And this will probably be a really cool stat to check on like every five years or so. I mean, you almost in that in that that list of beers see what I would argue like are two different waves yes. of craft beer fans. You see Sierra Nevada, 90 Minute and Two Hearted, which are like OG exciting beers that we both still love to this day. But that next wave was like Zombie Dust, Pliny, The Elder and Hetty Topper. But now you're seeing those more than ever before. And I bet in sooner rather than later, Treehouse and Trillium Jeez. and right, all those will be on here too. So that's kind of like that wave that we're all arguably living in, but perhaps even now exiting. If we're looking at craft beer and, and waves, perhaps we're in we're like leaving because I those beers, because I mean Treehouse was the most checked in beer or brewery on Untapped a year ago. So like clearly they're out there. Um, so what's, well, sure we'll see those on this list, but then you're already thinking about what's, what's next. So this is going to be really cool to look in on every couple of years and kind of see the story it tells the history of beers that y- used to be impossible to find. And, and perhaps now you, you see them all over. It just talks about the, the growth of this industry. It's pretty, pretty wild and cool. Um, now, John, have you had a chance yourself to, uh, to dance with this badge yet? Honestly, Harrison, I've known this badge <laughs> existed in name, kind of like a Holy Grail where mm-hmm. it was mainly myth or legend, but I assumed like I've, my wish list is generally around 150 beers long and yeah. I never earned the badge. So I always assumed it was just uh, like a legend, like you weren't yeah. it was like Olmex Temple, like you weren't right. gonna find this badge in real That's life. True. true. So I haven't. Uh, I have yet to earn this badge, but I'm excited to know how now. Ten beers in ten days within a sixty day period, all from my wish list. It's just that simple. It's like registering your uncle's car at the DMV out of state. Exactly. It's really exactly easy. right. That's it. That's all. Just <laughs> a co- some paperwork, a couple of phone calls, local senators, some money under the table, and then yeah, and you're done. Boom. It's easy. Nothing have you right. earned this badge, in. Harrison? <laughs> I have. I yes, and it really did. It, it surprised me. I mean, I've kind of been, you know, this past year, probably using my wish list more than ever before. Just getting in the habit of if I see a local bottle shop or brewery post about something, but out middle of the day, just pop it on the wish list. Just get it on there because I see, especially in our jobs, you know, I don't know, a hundred new beers a day, probably. Um, so like to keep that up here impossible and that's just getting more and more impossible by the moment. So I kind of made myself, uh, have a little bit of discipline and just got in the habit of see a beer that I want wish list. And so that paid off, uh, just a, a few weeks ago for earning this badge. I just earned it. I was super excited. I sent this screenshot of it to you. I was like, John, it's, it does exist. It's like that old M M&M and Santa commercial. They do exist. They both pass out. <laughs> Um, so like it was, it was very exciting, cool. And actually the beer that unlocked it was Burial's Spectacle of Martyrdom, which was your wow. best beer of the week. So it was one we both enjoyed 
and mine just happened to, again, exact scenario, saw it online, put it on my wish list, went out and found it, dropped some off at your house. And then when I went to drink mine, totally forgot that, or actually, I didn't know that I was number 10. I knew I'd been being more, again, regimented at going after my wish list, but there was no warning. Just popped right up there, and I couldn't believe it. It was like a exactly right a bippity boppity beer, and the fairy godmother <laughs> showed me the I, way. I, I, I like, <laughs> damn it! I like the way that you use your wish list. Mine is generally full of like beers that will never be made again, and right? Beers right. that I'll never find, and they're just sure. on there, like in the off chance. But right, one. Uh, not, it won't help you earn the badge, but it may help you. Yes, very cool. It may help you if you have, like I do, if you have a, a wish list with a hundred beers on there. Or, uh, bless you if there's a thousand or more. Yeah. Sometimes it can happen. Yep. There's a cool trick if you open up that wish list in the Untapped app. Go to the upper right, at least if you're on an iPhone. Click those three dots. And there'll be a little drop down menu and you can search for all the beers on your wish list in one click and it'll scan 20, 50 miles away from you. And it'll tell you any of the beers that are on your wish list. It'll tell you where to get them. Amazing. Awesome. Love that feature. Love That's yep. what I use my wish list for. And it just breaks my heart because no, uh, Julius isn't here yet. Um, I know. But in so right. many others, but, but great function. I love that part. Yeah, exactly right. Especially when we're all traveling again to kind of use that that way. And right, if you are up in New England and you just just jump on that wish list, click on Julius, click on nearby, and you may find it. Um, so yeah, it's it, Untapped is all kinds of cool stuff like that. That even we're learning more about uh, as we we do this show and dive deeper into all things that are Untapped. So hope you're enjoying it too and learning some things. Got a lot of cool feedback from the beer connoisseur episode we did. Most recently, a lot of people kind of discovering that that, that uh, badge functions as a beer passport. So if you want to learn kind of more t- tips and tricks about it, jump back to that episode, um, the one right before this one, um, and we can we'll kind of hear how we discovered all the cool stuff it does. This is another unique badge to untapped. Only get it once. Got some things to do to get it that you may not realize. Now you know. So go out there, use that wish list, and... Be prepared to be happily surprised like I was. Speaking of happy things, it's that time. We're going jump fishing. Into, that's it. Ah, not yet. That's later. Go night fishing after this. I've got the dynamite. You've got the bourbon. <laughs> Those seagulls don't know what hit them. Um, but before <laughs> that, <laughs> before that, John's going to whisk us away to magical Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. What do we have for this week's verified venue of the week, John. Sunny Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> the city that breaks my heart with their sports dominance and then <laughs> breaks it again by reminding me that I don't have sandwiches with french fries on them. Oh. Um, Pittsburgh's a great city, uh, akin to a Buffalo, New York, and that you don't mm. love it enough. Of course, if you have to play Pittsburgh in sports, I understand yeah. why. But... We're going to feature a place in 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 Pittsburgh. I was talking with some friends that live that way. Almost spilled beer all over myself. I had a little yeah. panic attack here. <laughs> um, that wasn't the that wasn't the YouTube camera. That was me panicking. Um, so I was talking to some friends in Pittsburgh. They do a podcast up there, and we were talking about Wilmington beer and Pittsburgh beer, and they kept talking about General Braddock's IPA from Brew Gentlemen out near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And they were just honestly making me jealous that I've never had this beer before that carried so much lore for Pittsburgh. So I went on Untapped and I looked for the beer and I found Mike's Beer Bar. It just sounds like you're at the end of the bachelor party and your buddy's like, let's go over to Mike's, we'll have a beer. Like it's unassuming. (laughs) But the location at Mike's, Holy cow, Harrison, they've got over 50 Pittsburgh beers on tap, and they've got 80 taps in total with about 500 different beers at Mike's Beer Bar. That's incredible. It's right next to PNC Park. If you want to watch your team get their butt kicked by Pittsburgh, that's great, too. Um, And you can earn a special badge. Mike's has their own badge on Untapped. So if you're fortunate enough to go there, choose from a slew of beers and check in, you get a Mike's badge while you're there. That's always a nice extra bonus. 
Uh, Harrison, any did you get a chance to look and see if they're doing anything special? Yeah, the, the specials here are, I mean, amazing. If you're fortunate enough to be near Mike's Beer Bar and you haven't taken advantage of the buy three, get three Crowlers free deal, what are you oh, doing yeah. with your life? I know, exactly. It's a Crowler six-pack that's half off and like i mean that's it's that's amazing kind of mix and match a, match a little bit and, and have some fun but with 80 beers that's probably I, I mean every time you go you can get six different crawlers and, and and be surprised and have a whole beer adventure just from one spot and i mean i'm glad we're getting bigger with our beer vessels i'm glad cans were hot for a minute and 16 and then 19 and now we're doing 32 ounce crawlers and there's six packs of them this is the future i was hoping for and I mean, if you want to hang out for a little bit there before you take your crawlers home, they have an outdoor area. You can enjoy a Delmonico steak, some maybe some smoked tomato soup. I mean, this place is sick. I wish I could put Mike's on my wish list. And that's a good idea. Um, yeah. Wish list of places to go. Everybody needs that right now. Keep wishing. We'll get there that's soon. It. That's it. Um, before I uh, go, Harrison, yeah. I had some cool beers in recent memory. Ooh, tell and me. And the for me, as we record this episode, the best beer of the week I drank yeah. on the podcast when I was talking to the Pittsburgh guys. It's a local, it's a Wilmington beer Ooh. from New Anthem. Yeah. Uh brewery that we've talked about before, drank on the show before, and they're well known for their IPAs, but this was Hillbilly Profit. It's a ten and a half percent barrel age stout it tastes like confidence and boozy chocolate so <laughs> that beer, i bought it initially it was one of the few like bottled beers you can buy from a wilmington brewery i bought it thinking i was going to sit on it for a while it lasted about maybe i made it three four months not okay. even yeah and that was the best beer I had in the last week by far. It was amazing. But they also just re-released Eats Guitars, which is nice. one of Saw my that. top five beers in the world. It's a hot yep. lager. And I'm going to be doing a lot of research on that beer in the coming week. Smart. Um, Smart. What about you, Harrison? Have you, yes. have you drank anything that you recall as being worthy of the best beer of the week? Yes, I did. Fortunate again to have literally had a, a great a great week of research, as we say. <laughs> it happened just, but not really at all. So <laughs> I enjoyed a beer called Solemnity Hellas from Incendiary Brewing Company out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It's uh, like a 4.9% Hellas lager, and they just kill that style. I know everyone's probably sick of hearing me talk about it, but it's one of my favorites. And um, for a couple reasons... I mean, it's just a great style, but the way they, these guys do it, there's like a very specific, in a good Hellas in my eyes and, and for my palate, there's like a very specific, almost like honey-like biscuit note that the the pale malt hits when done well. And this one had it. It's just a very distinct, I've only ever really tasted it in, in Hellas style lagers. So this one had it sub 5%, which makes me excited and they also use vine Stefan yeast, so the famous German brewery that many people consider the oldest brewery like in the world that's still open or whatever. Old. Right, yeah. Yeah, so they you can, as a brewery, so the yeast that they use, the house yeast that a lot of these breweries use, they've been using since they opened, and some of the ones in Germany and Belgium have been using the same strand or even the, like just a different generation of the same yeast for hundreds, if not thousands of years and so you can actually get some if you're a home brewer you can get some as well as a commercial brewer and use it in your own brewery so we did it we we're a couple of belgian breweries and i was at a chimney creek and um and i knew that vine stuff i was out there you get their yeast and so this was really cool for just many 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 nerdy reasons to enjoy this beer but it was so clean if you look at my check-in photo it's like crystal clear um, and just absolutely delicious. And if you're ever in Winston Salem, check those guys out. Their outdoor area is like um, almost like a Roman Coliseum. There's all kinds of like big pillars set up all over the place. It's it's really cool. It's a definitely a unique experience. So haven't been there yet, but after having that beer from them, now all right, we need to wish us for places because whenever I get out to <laughs> Winston Salem, like look out, I'm going to put a tent in the middle of their outdoor area and just kind of sit there and drink lager all day. So. 
But that was awesome. Easily a, my best beer of the week. Hot diggity dog. Well, it's that time again, folks. The end of the show. I want to thank our sponsor, our friends over at Manscaped.com. And remember, you can get 20% off and free shipping by using the code Drinking Socially. It's Drinking Socially, one word, at Manscaped.com. 20% off, free shipping, and just use, just use that code. Drinking Socially, unlock your confidence, and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And after you get done using the right tools for the job and you're full of confidence, (laughs) head over to Twitter, head over to Instagram, head over to wherever you're listening to this or watching it on YouTube and Mm. do us a favor, hit the like button because Harrison and I literally cry every time that happens. Well, I don't know how to cry, but I'm confident Harrison does. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to use those tears to make a lager. Uh, <laughs> well, I love if it. we get enough, if we get enough likes, but seriously, let us know if, if you like the show um, or what you don't like. Put it in the comments. Yeah, uh, let us know. Comments have been fun the past couple of weeks. A lot of fun I love stuff. seeing it. I love seeing it. Um, how how people are taking uh, us drinking beers and doing good things with it. So, yep, yep, um, exactly right. Thanks for Speaking listening to this yeah. show. What's next, next week, John? Week, yeah, big big news next week. Uh, monstrous news next week. We're doing something really special with Rogue Brewing. So stay tuned. See you in seven days. They're actually dropping off some real live Mm. monsters for us, as I understand. Oh, good. Uh, Hopefully that works out right. I have small dogs, but yeah, we'll find out next week. I have a wall I need to walk down and knock down anyway. So this is perfect timing. Welcome the monsters. Come on, come all. Until then, guys. Cheers.